Do you get pain on the inside of your knee? If you get inner knee pain, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to explain seven different causes of inner knee pain, as well as two simple tips that you can use that will probably drastically help your inner knee pain, regardless of which of the seven causes it is. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We help people stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. So I mentioned I would share seven different causes of inner knee pain. And I'll start from inside of the joint and then move outward. But like I said, there are a few similar things that can cause a lot of these different types of problems. And just understand that if you have pain on the inside of your knee, it may not be just one of these things. It may be a combination of a few different ones. But again, we'll get to this in a little bit. Two simple tips can fix a lot of different types of inner knee pain, and sometimes rather quickly. So first of all, let's start inside the joint. What are the structures inside the actual knee joint that can cause pain on the inside of your knee? Well, you've got the actual joint surfaces themselves, the cartilage on the ends of the, the tibia, which is your lower leg bone, and the femur, which is your upper leg bone. And if you've worn down the cartilage between those two surfaces, you can get grinding of the bone on the bone, particularly if you've worn them down really, really far. And that can cause some inflammation and pain in the inside of your knee. But not everyone who has knee arthritis, even really, really bad knee arthritis, has pain. So there's something additional that has to cause that arthritis to grind on one another and cause some inflammation. And a lot of times that is twisting of the knee, that your knee is built in basically two separate compartments, an inner compartment and an outer compartment. And it's like a hinge joint on each side. So if it's moving straight in a forward and back direction, your knee works pretty well. But if you end up getting twisting motions that go along with that, that can create some grinding and twisting on the inside of your joint and cause some inflammation in the cartilage in your knee. Now you've got the articular cartilage, which is irritated in osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, but osteoarthritis is the normal one that occurs with aging. But there's another type of cartilage in your knee called fibrocartilage. And you've probably heard of that referred to as the meniscus. The meniscus is a fibrocartilage disc that sits on top of the actual cartilage and it kind of forms a ring around the inner knee joint, the medial meniscus, and the outer knee joint, the lateral meniscus. And together they give the knee a little bit more stability, but they too, just like the articular cartilage, are susceptible to injury if you do a lot of twisting or rotation. They can be injured by an athletic injury, for example, if you cut or pivot or twist too quickly, or if you're hit on the knee joint, that can injure your medial meniscus. But it can also be caused just by gradual wear and tear. For example, if you're an overpronator and you do that for years and years and years on end, that can gradually wear down the meniscus over time. Now, the good news is that recent research has shown that most meniscus problems recover fairly well without needing surgery. And sometimes, as good as or better than if you actually had surgery. So even if you have a meniscus tear on your MRI, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to need surgery for it. So those are the two causes of inner knee pain that's actually inside the knee joint itself. Now moving outside of that, you've got a ligament that runs along the inside or medial side of your knee, and that's called the medial collateral ligament. You've got a medial collateral ligament on the inside and a lateral collateral ligament on the outside. But that medial collateral ligament is actually just really a thickening of the joint capsule that sits around the knee. Now, that usually, if it's injured to a severe extent, it's usually from a traumatic injury. Again, if you're playing football and you get hit from the outside of your knee and it causes a shearing of your knee like that, that gaps the inner knee and stretches that ligament. And if you really, really stretch it, you can tear the ligament completely, which could potentially require surgery. Or you could have a partial tear, which is referred to as a grade two ligamentous injury, or you could just stretch it or irritate it, which is a grade one. And just to be clear, a grade three is when you tear it completely. So the grades correspond with grade one being the least severe, just kind of stretching it or tweaking it, so to speak. A grade two tear being 
that it just stretches and tears a little bit and grade three, it's completely ruptured. But you can also get a more mild irritation of that just from your knee joint kind of getting out of position. And this often won't show on an MRI, but if you've done a lot of pronation like this, it can kind of cause a little shift in your knee joint where the tibia will shift inwards on the femur and it puts your knee out of the correct alignment. And like I mentioned, the knee joint is sort of a hinge joint on both sides. So when it's moving straight forward and backward, everything's nice and happy. If you start getting too much side to side movement, then that stretches the MCL and throws the joint out of its normal alignment. So I'll get to a little tip to correct that tibial shift here in a little bit, which can help with medial collateral ligament problems or medial meniscus problems or medial uh, knee arthritis, if you have arthritis in the inner side of the knee joint. So now moving out from the ligaments, we'll now go to muscles and tendons around the knee. And this type of knee pain isn't typically actually in the knee joint itself. It's usually either above or below the knee joint. Now, one of the most common types of inner knee pain actually isn't in the knee joint itself. It's just a little bit below on the inside here. And that's where three tendons wrap around the inside of the knee and they attach at what's called the pes anserine. There's a little bursa that runs underneath those tendons and those three tendons wrap around the knee this way. And they're formed by a muscle that runs down your leg in sort of a diagonal fashion like that called your sartorius, a muscle that runs down the inner side of the leg called your gracilis, and one of your hamstring tendons that wraps around the inside with a big long name that's semitendinosus. Now those three tendons, they wrap around the knee joint and the two that seem to be the most problematic are that adductor, the gracilis that runs down the inside and the hamstring muscle that wraps around this way. Now you can see how if something's wrapping around your knee like this and you're twisting inwards, it causes a lot of irritation on that tendon. And notice I've referred to that twisting inwards motion several times, you'll probably see where that's going when we get to treating it here in just a little bit. Now, another muscular cause that can cause inner knee pain is your quadriceps. There's a little head of your quadricep right here called your vastus medialis. Your vastus lateralis is on the outside, rectus femoris runs down the middle, and then there's a deeper one, the vastus intermedius, that lies deep to that. But in regards to inner knee pain, it's that vastus medialis that can cause pain. And this is typically knee pain that's just a little above the joint line where that tendon attaches into the kneecap. And so you may feel the pain kind of around the inner side of the kneecap, or you may feel it just a little bit above the knee joint itself. Now trigger points in that vastus medialis or knots in that muscle, if you poke around and you find some tender spots, that can cause pain on the inside of the knee. And stretching your quadriceps is one great way to help with that type of problem. I've got another video that I can refer to you for that specific problem, but there's a specific way that you do need to stretch them in order to get that vastus medialis. Because if you just do the typical pull your knee to your bottom, you're probably not gonna get that muscle quite as stretched as it should be. So those are the two muscular causes. Again, those pen, pes anserine tendons that wrap around the inside of the knee, as well as the vastus medialis that's on the quadriceps. Now moving on to nerve causes. And a lot of people don't think about these as causes of knee pain. They are less common than more the local structural things like the meniscus, arthritis, pesanserine, tendonitis, and the like. But they do happen and they are things that you should keep in mind. So there's a little peripheral nerve that is a branch of your femoral nerve that runs down the front of your thigh. It wraps around the inside of the knee and then comes down into the lower leg. And that's called your saphenous nerve. And again, if you do motions like that, that can overstretch your saphenous nerve. Um, the saphenous nerve is also a branch of the femoral nerve, which runs through your thigh. And so stretching your quadriceps can help out if you do have that type of problem as well. So again, avoiding that twisting motion and stretching out your quadriceps are things that are good for that type of problem. Now, the final cause that I'll cover actually isn't in your leg at all. It's actually a pinched nerve in your lower back. And the L3 or the L4 nerves in your lower back prefer pain down into the inner knee. The L3 nerves typically more just down to the knee. The L4 nerve goes 
to the inner knee and then down into the lower leg as well. And for that, I would refer you more to some of our back pain videos. We have lots of different videos on this channel that will help you with various types of back pain and pinched nerve in your lower back and sciatica, which this isn't really sciatica, but some people do refer to it as that. So I'll refer you to those videos for more information about how to treat a back problem that's causing inner knee pain. So now how do you fix inner knee pain if you do have it? I mentioned there are two really simple tips that can help a lot of different types of inner knee pain. And you probably remember me referring to this a lot. So this is where this comes in, that you wanna avoid that type of motion over pronating when you're walking, which may happen by your foot flattening out. It may happen if your hip muscles are too weak, but when you get too much of that inward twisting motion like that, it overstretches your medial collateral ligament. It puts stress on your pes and serine tendons. It causes twisting on your meniscus and the cartilage on the inside of your knee, the articular cartilage on the inside of your knee. And so that type of problem is probably the biggest individual cause of pain on the inside of your knee. And so if you can avoid that inward twisting or over pronation of your foot motion, then that's one really good way to stop a lot of different types of inner knee pain. Now, how do you do that? Because you've been walking for probably years by the time you're watching this video and you've learned a specific way to walk. And if that happens to be twisting your knee inwards, how do you stop that? Well, one way is just to form a little arch in your foot, kind of doming your arch by sort of scrunching your toes a little bit. And when you do hit, try not to let that arch flatten down completely. Hold your foot in a little bit of a dome as you're walking and putting weight on it and try not to allow it to go completely flat as you put weight on it. Now, additionally, you wanna to try to hit a little bit on the outer side of your foot. Now, you don't stay all the way on the outer side of your foot because that's not good for your foot, but it will help you to avoid flattening out too quickly when you're walking. Now, that's a good way to prevent inner knee pain, but what if you're having it? What if you already have pain on the inside of your knee and you try walking like that and it's still a little bit uncomfortable? Well, that comes back to that tibial shift that I mentioned before. That if your knee joint from walking like this for a long period of time has caused things to shift out of position, then you wanna correct that before you use that other tip of walking, controlling that pronation or flattening of your foot. So to do that, you'll sit in a chair, and if this is the leg that's flattening or over pronating too much, you wanna take one hand and put it just below the knee joint on the inside of the knee. Now it helps to have your elbow bent and the other leg reinforcing that. That just gives you a little more push force because you're gonna be pushing this way. Now you take the other hand and put it on the outside of the thigh bone just above the knee. So this one is just below the knee. This one is just above the knee. And now you use this leg over here to push against your elbow, push against your knee, and you just kind of shove things back into alignment. So you're pushing inwards with this hand, pushing outwards with this hand, and then you just press and hold, hold about five to 10 seconds for time, and just oscillate back and forth like that, five or 10 times. And you shouldn't feel a whole lot of motion. It's not a big, shearing motion that these are little tiny movements about an eighth of an inch so it's not a huge movement you may not even feel like you're doing anything but hopefully you will when you stand back up feel that you've done something because your knee won't hurt so you push like that and then when you do go to stand back up remember to dome the arch of your foot keep your knee in alignment with your toe and don't let, allow it to collapse inwards and then you walk kind of like I mentioned before with your arch domed and keeping your knee over top of your toe. So those are the seven different causes of pain on the inside of your knee, as well as the two tips that you can use to help control pain on the inside of your knee. Now, if you try those two tips and you're still having more problems, it would be helpful to seek out advice from a physical therapist who sees a lot of different knee problems, particularly sees a lot of problems about pain on the inside of the knee. And if you happen to be in St. Louis, we'd be happy to help you out and more for life. Just contact us at our office and we'll get you in for an appointment. And no matter where you're watching this from, if you found this video helpful, 
give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.